meet every need. Friends, and welcome to United Christian Faith Ministries. You know, it's a place where we're reaching always to touch, preaching to save, and teaching to change. God has given us a mission to bring people of all races to Jesus and into his family, to develop faith into Christ-like maturity, to equip people for their mission in the church and the lifelong mission in the world. You know, that's what ministry is really all about, transforming and changing lives. And your input, your feedback to us is so critically important. Ministry is finding a need and meeting it, and God knows we've been called to the kingdom for such a time as this. Let us hear from you. Don't forget to like and share. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to our website, www.ucfministries.org. Let us hear from you there. And I want you to know your needs are our priorities. The things God has placed on your heart concerning ministry and vision, let us hear from you. God bless you. May God keep you.
to thank you for it. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for peace on tonight. We thank you for joy on tonight. We thank you for healing on tonight, God. Thank you for mending broken hearts. Thank you for healing our mind, our wounded spirits, oh God. We thank you, God, for giving us all that we need in our families, Father God. Thank you that you're working miracles even now in our homes, in marriages, in relationships right now, God. We just want to give you the glory. We just want to give you the glory, God. We cry out, oh, Lord, we trust you, God.
as we lift you, God, I can feel that you're lifting us up, God. Yes. Oh, we lift your name high. Lift the heavy burdens, God.
just worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So, Father, we thank you tonight for the privilege of praise and worship, to have moments to think and reflect upon who you are, to use the faculty given to us, the mind, with the mind we serve you. We make well of this space and this place. We make full use of the time we have here on earth. This seven o'clock hour given to us for worship. We enter the temple that you might enter the temple where two or three will gather in your name. Your word says you will be among us. And we give deference to your presence tonight. We lift up holy hands and we surrender our hearts to you. We think well of you tonight. We humble ourselves before you. We bring everything under examination tonight. And we say, Father, have your way in our life. Uh, perfect that which concerns our faith. Strengthen us in our inward man. As we seek your presence, O oh God. Hallelujah. We take joy in our King tonight. For you reign and you reign alone. Oh, Father, be pleased to dwell with us tonight. Let no one leave the same way they came. Let us all be made better by your presence. Huh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the edifying that comes through fellowship with you. We take joy in your presence. Now, Father, we ask that you be glorified in all things. Let there be an undeniable evidence that after tonight, it is known within and without, we have been with God. Hallelujah. 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 And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done. And now, and now. Blessed Savior, thank you. Thank you for what you're saying to us now. Thank you. Make known your mysteries unto us tonight. Hallelujah. Do what only you can do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
praise as you take your seat. <clears throat> Hallelujah. What, what a night. What a night. What a night. What a night. I don't know about you, but I am in some kind of expectation on this week. Uh, yeah. God is working things out in my favor. Did you hear what I just said? God is working things out in our favor. Tell somebody I got favor with God. Oh, I, I, I don't mean, I don't believe some of you mean that. I've got favor with God. You, you know how an incredible position that is. I have favor with God. Thank you for coming tonight. It's a joy to be here. So much to be said, and uh, we will make full use of this time I have with you tonight. To all of our guests, thank you for being here. It's no accident that you're here tonight. God has a word for all of us, and, and, and it's good that we be here tonight. You that are watching me online, it's good that you be here. Be not distracted from this, this dialogue tonight that God has with us through the Spirit. Matthew chapter 6 is where I will start tonight. But I want to talk to you tonight about prayer and why, why we should pray. Why pray? Why pray? And uh, I, I wanted to approach the topic of prayer uh, from several angles, but it was not until the 5 o'clock hour God's clarified um, where we need to go tonight with the Spirit in the challenge to the body of Christ to pray, to pray. Matthew's chapter 6, I'm going to read one passage of scripture for you, and then the ushers have some little cards. I want um, you all to do a little exercise with me tonight, it's only going to take about two or three minutes, and to the team that gets it right, I'm going to give each of you $50. All right, so it's only going to be teams of three, teams of two or three, and you're only going to have about two minutes, and the first one that brings me the card or the note or the paper with the right answer that I'm looking for, I'm going to buy you lunch tomorrow, all right, and if two of you get it, I'll spend up to $300, all right, we'll give away $300 tonight, if you get it, you ready, Chris, all right. For those who are watching me online that don't tune off, let me just go on and read this scripture. Matthew's chapter 6. Um, look at verse 8. You see that? Matthew's chapter 6, verse 8. Matthew's chapter 6, we're introduced to what is called the model prayer. Some call it the Lord's Prayer, but it's really not the Lord's Prayer, right? It's the model prayer. It's not the prayer Christ prayed. It's the model prayer. So verse 8 says, therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask. You see that? However, he goes further and then gives them instruction on how to talk to God. In this manner, therefore, pray. You see it? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. You got it? All right. Here's the exercise. Raise your hand if you're going to play tonight. You're going to play tonight. You're going to, I shouldn't say play, you're going to participate. You got to find three people to work with you. Three people. You only have two minutes to answer this. Three people. All right. You're sitting by somebody you know that's not smart, don't know the Bible, no revelation. Just get up, move. It's okay. Just tell them I feel led to move. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> yes. It, huh? Say that. It can be two. It can be two. It can be two. I just know three are better than one, but it can be two. It's this real simple. If you need a, if you don't need a postcard, just you're gonna write it on something. You're gonna bring it to me as quick as you get this answer. Got it? And I hope you got a cash out because that's how I'm gonna pay you tonight. Or you have to come back to church and get the check tomorrow. Okay? I don't think I got enough cash. I don't know if I have $150 cash. 
my wealthy men over there might have it, and uh, I'll pay them back. All right. Here's the exercise. If you had to give two words to describe you as a team, if your team had to use two words to describe God, what would be those two words? Go. As a team, once you feel like you have the answer, bring it to me. Y'all wait. Let me just see if I have the answer. You need to put your name on it. If there's no name on it. All right, you take that back. That ain't it. That ain't it, baby. Uh, That ain't it. Not it, 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 not it. You working with me? Which one did you give me? Find yours, because I don't think you had an answer to it. This was yours here? Yes, sir. Okay. We got one winner. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Not it. Not it. Not it. Well, you didn't even look. I did. I did. <laughs> Not it. Huh? <laughs> Not it. Not it. Not it. Not it. Not it. Y'all got all kind of words on there. I said two. Not it. Not it. I'll come back to this. I think you just wrote something else on that. Not it. 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 <laughs> All of these are great. Not it. Not it. Is people still right? No, it's too late. It's too late. <laughs> this you? Come on, where my money is. No, I already got one answer up here. All right. Let's say everybody just judge whatever you have left. The answer I'm looking for is our father. <laughs> that ain't on y'all paper. Nope. What she brought up here was not it. Thank you. It's a, it's a little late, but it's a little late. Got it, got it. You were right here. Got it, got it, got it. I, I, you got it. The first one, though, was Celestine. What's y'all group? Y'all group stand? Oh, y'all three. All right, all three of y'all got fit. There you go. There. $50 to each one of you. And uh, we'll get your cash app tonight. Everybody else that put our father, uh, I owe you one, all right? I'll I'll give you something Friday when I see you. No, literally, I'm I'm going to give you something probably Friday, all right? The greatest revelation you can have of God is Father. It's Father. You got to understand something about prayer. When the disciples come along and and notice the peculiarness of Jesus, and they say to him, "Um, teach us to pray. Jesus says, okay, don't pray like you've seen before. Pray this way, our Father. And I'm not sure if he rushed into the rest because... They had to digest our father because the custom, you got to understand, all they had practiced for years, they could never address God as father. That's blasphemy. To suggest God as father is to suggest you have divinity. If God is divine and you say he's your father, 
then that implies you are divine. And, and so no priest could let you get away with calling yourself divine. You don't have the same DNA as God. How are you going to say you're his son? You're his child. So they had names for God. Elohim, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Provider, Yahweh. They, they, had, they had names, but nobody had the revelation as Father. Who is this Jesus that comes along and calls himself the Son of God? They never heard of anything like that. You ain't on that level. We know your parents. We know where you come from. We know the obscurity you come from. Your hometown. You ain't royalty. You walk just like us. You had to learn carpentry just like everybody else. You had to work. Jesus, you don't even have a mansion. You don't own a stable of horses. You got a nice little robe, but you ain't all that. You get it? All this is going through the head. When you pray, pray our Father. This is how you address him. That never had that invitation before. And how many of us today, tonight, have been calling God Father, but without revelation. Calling God Father, but not have, have not consented to let him be Father. We'll let him be emergency management services to us, EMS. When I'm in trouble, call him. Are you with me? We'll let him be healer. We'll let him be a miracle worker, mystery worker. But Father, that's relational. That's parental. Father, that's identity. That speaks to where I come from. Father. That speaks to my confidence. I remember Brother Jeff looking at my dad as a little boy when he was in his prime, how strong he was, how tough he was. When I went to school, we rode the bus, and we would talk about how strong each other's daddy was. My daddy could beat your daddy. We made fun of each other's daddy. Your daddy a drunk. I seen your daddy last night. Your, your daddy underwear. I ain't going to say. We, we, we. Back then we had clothes lines. People hung their clothes in the back and we would ride our bikes by to see people. Clothes and garments. We, back then we played mama jokes. I'm going to just leave it at that, right? I saw your mama underwear on the line last night. I just, you don't want to get me started, right? Saw your dad at the corner, so he's a drunk. We played, we, we made our boast in the strength, the manhood of our father. Now, if we, if you, we had that ingrained, inherent capacity as a, as a child, and some of us perhaps didn't have a father coming up, so we didn't get that privy to, to see the manhood, the strength, the provider. And, and so could it be sometime... We struggle with relating to God this way because we didn't quite have the human experience. And, and so we struggle with the relationship with God because all we've known is, is love on condition. We don't know that a father loves unconditionally. Am I making sense? So to go deep with God, you got to meditate upon that. Our Father. Are you with me tonight? C.S. Lewis once said, my subject is why pray. I pray because I can't help myself. I want somebody to write that down. I pray 
because I can't help myself. How many of you can say tonight, I pray because I just can't help myself? That's a good reason to pray. Jesus would put it this way, without me, you can't do nothing. The truth of the matter, we ought to all pray because we can't help ourselves. He went on to say, I pray because the need flows out of me all the time. My neediness for God is always flowing out of me all the time. And I've recognized I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come, that's a continuum, to thee. Prayer doesn't change God. Prayer changes us. Have you ever felt like your prayers had no power? Anybody? You ever wonder if you really even know how to pray? Anybody in the room can be honest and say, at times I'm afraid to pray? We call you up tonight and say, hey, I want you to pray. Pray the prayer of faith. How many of you believe everybody would rush to the stage to pray it? Probably not, huh? The disciples, when they're traveling with Jesus, they never asked him to teach, and he was an incredible teacher. He didn't teach long. They didn't even ask him to show me how you perform miracles. How many like to perform miracles? Like Jesus performed them. Don't be ashamed of yourself. You, ain't, you don't even want to know how to perform miracles. It's, I don't know if that's a trick question. You, you need a miracle right now. Look at your bank account. Come on now. Really? Go home. Look at your refrigerator. You need a miracle. <laughs> Let me stop. You get it, though. You, you get it. But what they were impressed with the most was relationally how Jesus related to God. He had this relationship with a being that nobody could see. He had this capacity to go away and go off into the mountains and come back and just light the world on fire. Nothing seemed to get to him. He was falsely accused. By John chapter 4, his own family want to have him locked up. He's rejected by his own family. You do know his brothers and sisters didn't really follow him until he got up from the grave. <laughs> he was reviled, but he reviled not back. They said, Lord, Luke 11 and 1 records their words specifically. Lord, teach us to pray. And then he shares with them this model prayer. But there are four reasons we learn why to pray. Four reasons. Let me give them to you. He says, after this manner, pray. Number one, the first command is, the first reason, rather, it is a command. You and I are commanded to pray. Meaning, in the spirit, now that we're after the law of the spirit of life, in the spirit of life, in that law, is a command to pray. Okay? I have a legal obligation in my covenant with God to pray. When I don't pray, I am violating a spiritual law. I'm in violation of the law not to pray. Now you understand why the devil, now you understand why flesh doesn't want you to pray. 
When you pray and relate to God as Father, do you not know you terrorize the devil? If I say it right now, find somebody and start praying for them. As a matter of fact, I want you to do that. Find you somebody you can go pray for right now and take 30 seconds and just go pray a prayer blessing on their life. Go pray for somebody right now. Hey, glory to God. They can be right next to you. Pray for them right now. They pray for you, you pray for them. Pray for them. Release favor and blessing on them right now. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Hey, God, I thank you. Do it, God. Show your glory. Make good on every promise. Cause it to come to pass. Hey, blessed Savior. Grace and more grace. Grace and more grace. Grace and more grace. Grace and more grace. Hallelujah. Come on, in Jesus' name, it is so. It is so. Come on, shout, it is so. Tell that person you pray for, I believe what I ask God for is already done in your life. Now, I hope you meant that. For, for the person who was just religious, you were just saying some words going through the motion. Some of you just proved you ain't even saved tonight because you can't even obey what the Spirit is doing. It's all good. I'm going to do altar call in a moment. You ought to believe by faith. It's already done. Let me jump ahead. The next chapter, Matthew 7 and 7 says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. And him that knocketh it shall be opened. He, glory to God. Three powerful words, ask, seek, knock. These words are what we call it in, in the imperative mood. What, am, what are you saying, Pastor? Meaning they are commands. They are in the present tense. They are continuous action. Glory to God. The verse could be translated, Matthew 7 and 7, keep on asking. I'm riding the church to then the Lord rebuked me. Says, I told you to keep asking me for that property. Keep on seeking. Verse 16, 17 says, first it says, rejoice forevermore. And then it says, pray without ceasing. Then it says, in everything, give thanks. Rejoice, pray, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Pray without ceasing. Ceasing. What, is that, what does that mean? Without going so deep, always be in the spirit of prayer. Let me see if I can try and give you a picture of it. What if I just call my wife and say, hey, you there? Yep. All right. Just want to make sure you're there. I'm about to go through the rest of my day. But I just want you to hear how it goes. Oh, hey, Sister Singleton, how you doing? Hey, V, what's up, my man? We got that revival tomorrow. We walk in the street. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Pray without ceasing. Go through the day with God on the line. And never hang him up. Go through the day with God on the line and never.
How you riding now? Imagine God told you to fast. You in Popeye's line talking about, give me a, give me a two-piece. Talk up. Give me a two-piece. God said, I hear you. Let's be honest. Truth be told, many of us hang the line up, don't we? we start off with him on the line in the house when ain't nobody around. As soon as we get in the car. You know, what, you know what our life would look like and be like if we prayed without ceasing? You know how free God would be to just drop in on the line and don't, don't go that way. He wouldn't have to ask where you are to tell you. Call this person. Speak this now into the atmosphere. Hey, glory to God. Always be in sync with what God is at work doing in the earth. Stay in the spirit of prayer. Are you with me today? Let's commit tonight to forming the habit of prayer. Go on, write that somewhere on your phone or just speak it until it gets into your sub mind. I commit to forming the habit of prayer throughout the day. I am to pray through requests. People going through something, I discern they're going through something. Person acting out on the job, seem like they've lost their peace, emotionally erect, I begin to pray for you circumstances that I come across that are not in divine alignment, that seems to be the source of chaos, I begin to pray. Spiritual impressions. Some of us are, have what we call spiritual intuitiveness greater than others. God can move upon your heart and you are led to pray for somebody. Pray for a situation. I commit to forming the habit of prayer. Jesus told us not to pray with the motive of the hypocrites who stood in the synagogue and prayed because they wanted to be seen by men. Matthew 6 and 6, he says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, when thou hast shut the door. Pray the Father which is in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee how? Openly. Openly, that times when God is calling you to pray. You ain't got to call all your friends and buddies. Let's get on the line and pray. No, just pray then. Am I making sense? When we pray, don't pray to impress people. I'm getting these little things out of the way. The Lord commands us to pray in an unseen way by others. Private prayer allows you to be vulnerable with God. Right? Think about when you're leading a prayer. you got to sound strong. you got to sound like you command. You could be weak, vulnerable, but you you, you, you got you to gotta be speaking in power and forth. No. Private prayers are so important. This is what the enemy wants to keep us from. You don't mind us coming to church and praying to a certain extent. It's these private prayers that God's after. Prayer is a command. Secondly, let's go deeper. Praying allows God to meet our needs. Praying allows God to meet our needs. Jesus teaches us how to pray so that God can meet all of our needs. Physical needs, psychological needs, spiritual needs. I'll say it again. Physical needs, because sometimes we think God doesn't care about our physical needs. He does. Psychological needs, okay? Your whole psychological well-being is summed up in three components. Number one. How do you feel about yourself? Number two, the quality of relationships you have with other people. And number three, how you respond to disappointment and how you respond to trauma that happens in your life. If you don't do those three, th three things well, you either have a mild case, a moderate case, or a severe case of mental illness. 
And at any case, any time in life, any season of our life, we can be suffering with mental illness. Hello, somebody. And when you immediately recognize it, you better come out of it. Because it can have more than just psychological effects on you. It can start to affect you physically. Are you hearing me today? And then the relationships of people around you. The enemy plays tricks on our minds to get us to not think so well of ourselves and forget God's plan and God's purpose and who we are. And we get caught up in the cosmetic stuff and we start disqualifying ourselves from God's blessings. It ain't because of your physicality. It ain't because of your impression or your ideology of yourself. You better understand what God feels about you, what God thinks about you, and let that mind be in you because that's what's going to attract what God has for you. Uh, God chose prayer as the means through which he will meet our needs. I'm going to say it again. God chose prayer as the means to which he'll meet our needs. The Bible teaches us that there are some things God promised to give us only if we ask. Some people will say, well, since God already knows, remember, Matthew 6, he just said, the Father knows what you need before you ask him. Some people will say, well, since God knows what I need, I don't have to tell him. He'll just give it to me when I need it. But that's not how it works. God gives us some things only if we ask him. No matter how obvious we are. Just this. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not. Because, why? Ye ask not. At this very moment, church, think about it tonight. What is your life lacking simply because you have not asked God for it in faith? Why does God want us to ask Him to meet our needs, such as Matthew 6 and 11, daily bread? Why well, I got to ask you, God, for daily bread? You know I need it. You ever thought about that? Well, he answers the question in John 16 and 24. John 16 and 24. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. And then he says, ask and you'll receive. Why, Jesus? That your joy may be full. Carl, I had to go look at this again. I want you to ask me so your joy is full. God wants us to ask him for specific things that meets our needs because it makes our joy full. In other words, John, it will cause us to be happier with what we have is if when we ask it, then he provides it. In the human condition, there is a, a probability with us that we're less likely many times to really be appreciative of what a father or a parent gives us without asking. Parents, talk to me for a second. You ever gave your child something they weren't asking for? And then they act like you gave it to them. You knew the value of it. It was big. It was needed. And they treat it like it wasn't nothing. Did you hear what I just said? I'll never forget one time I was wanted to buy one of my girls a pair of shoes, and I saw some real nice shoes, you know. I'm going to get you them. I don't want them shoes. 
I asked you for these Crocs. <laughs> You'll get them later. This is something here, and it's on sale. You, you ain't going to see this, but once in a lifetime, this is value. You could resell it to some. I'm going to get. Ask me, did they even say thank you for it? I'm riding back thinking, what in the world did I just do? You know, I'm, I'm thinking like, ain't nobody happy for this? No, I didn't ask you for it. When I got them Crocs, thank you, Daddy. He walked through that. Daddy, who bought these from me? I'm looking at them, man. You get it? Jesus knew this is real. There's some things the Father provides for you, you ain't appreciative of. Unless you ask me for it. Your joy ain't full until I give you what you ask for. Now, I need you to ask it because when you ask me, I want you to at the same time know I got capacity to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Not that I ask or want for you or that I think, but above all that you ask or think. What is God saying tonight? I need your thinking and I need your asking. Tell somebody you need to upgrade your ass life. Watch this. When good things we don't ask for happen to us, we actually have the audacity to think it's either luck or our hard work or we were wise in investing. And some of us go so far as to take the credit. That's why our rich, boozy selves in church can't dance and praise God. Because we got stuff in our life we didn't ask him for. I just went and got it myself. Like God didn't have nothing to do with it. That's why people can come to church and sit like God owed them a favor. They don't have no joy to praise him with. But oh, can I take you back 50 years? We were still in the Jim Crow era, and the saints had to walk to church, and they didn't have much, and they relied on God for everything. You couldn't beat them shouting and praising God. They weren't watching the clock worrying about they got to go to their job because God gave them everything, and their joy was full. And they was full because their joy was full. You see it? We're a dangerous somebody when our joy is depleted. Without joy, we have the capacity to turn this building into an idolatrous temple and make it about us. People come here to experience God and they get us. Because it becomes about what pleases. So if I pay the most money here, y'all better sing my song. If I got the highest title here, y'all better have me a seat. I'm the president of this. I'm the CEO of this. I'm a PhD. I'm a missionary. I'm a bishop. <laughs> this is crazy. As we want to be. Think about it. Think about it. But when God gives it to you, and you know it, you walk with the level of humility. I'm telling you, church, you walk with the level of humility, and at the mentioning of his name, he 
glory to God. You in for the party. Let's go. I will bless the Lord at all times. You, hey, hallelujah. His praises shall continuously be in my mouth. Am I making sense? He says now, you ask, I'm going to do it so your joy will be full. Am I making sense? Y'all, let's quit making this God life, this Jesus reality hard. Can we, can we be the real Jesus people? Can we really have a Jesus reality? Thank you, Jesus. When we ask God for things like a house, a car, a better job, and we realize God gives it to us because he loves us, we have a new, complete, different appreciation for those things. Our joy will be full. Prayer is a command. Prayer allows who to meet our needs? God to meet our needs. So if you live in a depleted life, you're envious and jealous of other people, okay? You think other people got... They are God's privileged children, and you are not because of their upbringing, or they had some things you didn't have coming up, and that, but you're both in Christ Jesus now. If you're feeling some kind of way, it's because you have a undeveloped prayer life. Prayer is your issue, nothing else. That's why I'm teaching tonight. Here's the third reason. Prayer releases God's power in our lives. Pray, hey, thank you, God. Prayer releases God's power in our lives. How many of you believe God is omnipotent? What does that mean? He's all powerful. <laughs> Y'all got to get back to Sunday school. Some of you scan me on this side over here. Okay, I didn't hear nothing. All right. <laughs> Matthew 18 and 26 says, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Y'all ready for this? Write this down. This means his power has no limits. And therefore, our prayers have no limits either. If his power has no limits, then my prayers have no limits. Glory to God. If prayer releases his power and his power have no limits, then my prayers have no limit. That means there's not even an expiration date on my prayer. Hey, glory to God. Anybody ever prayed something, you forgot you prayed it, and then it showed up like three years, and it's like, oh, I did pray for that. I never forget, I asked God to be the vice president of Pitney Bowes. As a young sailor in Jackson, Mississippi, I see this guy, Sonny Camel. He comes to the office. I'm looking at our people jumping through hoops. I'm seeing him talk about the business, inspire people. I'm saying, I want to be that one day. Fast forward, 1995, 2005. A company called W.W. W. Granger called me, recruited me, said, we need a government vice president. I interview so well, they hire me. I fly to Jacksonville, Florida, going through the orientation. On the plane, the Lord said to me, you told me you wanted to be vice president at Pitney Bowles. This is no lie. I'm in Jacksonville going through orientation. I get a phone call. Ellis, John Toops, your vice president, resigned. If you want to interview for the job, meet us in New Orleans Friday. I couldn't even tell them I done took another job. I'm like, God, you really love me. I went on to become the U.S. vice president of that company. Because I prayed a prayer in faith that was the least likely to happen. It had never happened before. A country boy from Natchez, Mississippi, in Jackson, Mississippi, becomes the vice president of all of sales in the U.S. market, 
that had never happened, but I prayed a prayer that had no limits to a God who could do anything, but I'm trying to stir somebody up tonight. Because God, you ain't waiting on God. God's waiting on you to understand the power that's released when you pray in faith. And your prayer has to be a continuum. Ask and keep on asking. Knock. Seek. You got it? Hallelujah. It's like a child asking. A child will come to you, and they believe you got capacity to do it. Thank you. You ain't got to tell them. They're going to keep asking. My daughter, Maddie, now want a car. Every time I go out of town, she calling me. Now, she never called me when I'm out of town. You see my gray car up there in, in Philly? You see my car in OKC? <laughs> Every town, you see my car? Come back home. Daddy, she hugging me. I mean, she all of a sudden, she fooled me too because I was thinking like we bonding. But I, I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, it really hit me. That this, if you see this, you know, she hugging me every time now. Like I always wanted this. But Maddie, no, we only a few days out before graduation and a car show up. I'm thinking, you know, one of my daughters really taking a liking to their daddy, you know, just appreciating me for all the things I do that they don't ask for. But I realize her joy is full because she's asked for something specifically, and I told her, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Who does God want to give an answer to tonight? that your joy might be full. And you don't have to wait till it show up. He done told you, I'm going to do it. Get on your knees and talk to God like you're not talking to a reluctant God, but a God that can do anything but fail. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I got to get out of here. I done made my own self happy now. I got to go home and pray. God's power have no limits, therefore my prayer has no limits. Are you hearing me today? Brothers and sisters, throughout the Bible, God performed miracle after miracle. Moses, the last 40 years of his life were filled with miracles. You remember the 10 plagues in Egypt, parting of the Red Sea, manna from heaven. God worked miracles through Moses' life. Here it is, because Moses, write it down, had a tabernacle. Oh, I could really go in right here, but I got to keep it foundational right now. We're going to go deeper with this. What did I just tell you? Moses had a what? He had a tabernacle. He had a tabernacle. What I'm really telling you is Exodus 33 and 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaking unto his friends. And he turned again into the camp, but his servants, Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, dep departed not out of the tabernacle. Brothers, to experience this power that I'm talking about that have no limits, we're going to need a tabernacle. Here it is. All I'm talking about is a regular place where you can meet God. Tabernacle. This is your next level if you're ready. If, you, if, you, if you're ready and not ready just for God to do something for you, trying to strengthen your prayer life, God wants you to have a regular place where you talk to him. It can be your home, your office, your car, on your way to work. Wherever you can pray in private, make it a habit of talking to God. James 5 and 16 says, confess your faults one to another, pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth what? Much. Prayer releases the power of God. Nothing like that quiet place, that tabernacle with God, where you build yourself up on your most holy faith. You pray in the spirit. You go deep, deep cried unto deep. You pause and wait. Let God permeate your heart. 
tell you some things to think about, some things to say, some things to pronounce, show you what brings him glory in your life, and you begin to declare and decree that thing, you become a prophetic voice, you speak your future before it ever manifests, all of this is supposed to come out of prayer. Here's the last one I'm finished. Prayer brings immediate rewards. Prayer brings what kind of rewards? Immediate rewards. Although you and I ask God to meet our personal needs, such as daily bread and the model prayer, deliver us from temptation, our prayer should not just be giving God our personal want lists. All right? One of the rewards, and here's how I want you to think about it, and I've shared this before, you just got a blessing right now tonight when I ask you to pray for somebody else. One of the rewards of prayer is being able to help another person go through, get through, get to what God has for them. Praying has to be a ministry, a way of helping other people. Say that with me. Prayer is a ministry a way of helping other people. Quit telling people you're praying for them and you're not earnestly praying for them. Everybody knows somebody right now we need to be praying for. We are commanded, Galatians 6 and 2, bear the burdens of one another. The primary way we bear each other's burden is by prayer. Failing to pray for other people is not a minor omission. It's not a minor sin of omission. 1 Samuel 12 and 23, moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord. Watch this. In ceasing to pray for you. Look what the prophet says. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against God in ceasing to pray for you. I submit to you tonight there are at least three people in your life right now. God does not want you to cease in praying for them. Hey, thank you, Jesus. That means don't let up every time they cross your mind. Keep it in front of them. Pray without ceasing. But look what the final part of 1 Samuel 12 and 23 says. But I will teach you the good and the right way. Pray without ceasing and I'll teach you the good and the right way. There are times I'd be praying for people that I think are just, the enemy has veiled their eyes. You know, fear tries to come in. There's something bad going to happen. If they, and, and then when I'm praying in sincerity, the Lord will remind me of a promise. And then he says, now decree that over their life. See what my will is for them. Now pray that. Don't pray the consequence of their sin. Pray the grace of my will. Did you hear what I just said? Now, as you and I pray for others, we will have the immediate rewards of knowing we are having a powerful and positive impact in the person's life. You and I are having a powerful and positive impact in the person's life that we're praying for right now. And that's why the devil don't want you to pray for the people. He don't want you to get connected to a church intercessory prayer team. He don't want you to be on the prayer calls. He don't want you to read books about prayer. He don't want you to develop that ministry of prayer. He want you to always be offended at people because if you got one person in your heart that you can't forgive, you can cancel all of your prayers. One offense that you can't let go. Praying for your children, your mama, your grandmama, anybody else, it won't work. You've lost the power. This is so important, and I'm finished. The immediate rewards of knowing we have impact. Prayer has an immediate reward when we pray for our own needs. Here's what the book of Philippians commands. Be careful for nothing. You remember that? Philippians 4 and 6. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Watch this. What is the immediate reward for praying? Boom, there it is. That's a boom moment. And the peace. That's the immediate reward for praying. 
Hey, thank you, Jesus. The meat and reward of praying. What do you mean? Asking God for what I need, what I believe is my entitlement as a child of God. He says, I'm going to read it to you again. Be careful for nothing. Hey, thank you, Jesus. But in everything by prayer and supplication, do it with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And here's the immediate reward. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Prayer allows God to then guard my heart and my mind against immediate worry and anxiety and stress. Make your request known unto me. And then release my peace over your heart and mind. I got you. Go to bed. I'm out of time. Look at somebody and tell them, God got you. Now get you some rest tonight. Stand to your feet. Let me pray. Hallelujah. Immediate reward. Give me some peace tonight. You got it? Father, I thank you tonight for the privilege to cast all of our burdens upon you. Your word tells us you care for us. Uh, Father, we cast our burdens upon you as a loving father. Where we have failed you in doubt and unbelief, we've carried our own burdens. We've entered into states of depression, mental illness, fear, because we couldn't let it go. Forgive us. We frustrated the grace Whence the Spirit grieved you. Forgive us. We went to bed tonight with several nights without peace. Forgive us. For every sleepless, peaceless night, I repent. Every night I went to bed with fear, I repent. For every morning I woke and I couldn't acknowledge you when your mercies were renewed unto me faithfulness was demonstrated forgive us but not another night I know the songwriter says only for one night but I I don't want one night I trust you Uh, we consent tonight God to let you be the dominant influence in our life Father of all fathers, blessed be your name. Will you lift your hands and receive the Holy Spirit tonight? He will guide you into all prayers. Receive the upgrade tonight. Hey, uh, hey. Receive the upgrade. Every believer that's in this room by faith tonight, your prayer life is being upgraded. Receive the upgrade. Receive the upgrade. The intelligence, you're going to run smoother, run faster. Hey, you'll be able to do more. You're going to respond quicker. Receive the upgrade. Hey, glory to God. New applications to your life. Receive the upgrade. New things, new dawnings. Greater revelation. Greater intimacy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You abide in me to minister to me. Not to others, but to me. Have your way, God, in me. Hey, reveal to me that which is needful. The Spirit shall show me things to come. Receive the upgrade. Get ready for what's next. It's better than what's been. It's better than what's been. Hey, it's better than what's there. Faith to faith. Glory to glory. We give you praise tonight, Father for the leading of the Spirit. We're made better by this truth tonight. And the church said amen. Clap your hands and give God some praise. Get an offering in your hand. I got to let you go. Hallelujah. Thank you for all those who participated in the seek and the search. Our Father. Hallelujah. your best offering. Let's honor God.
he's your father, give like he's your father. Just put him first. You can only give what he's given to you. It's amazing the people that say they love God and are stingy towards God. Can honor him with what's first. Don't be that way. Ask for revelation tonight. You'll be amazed that when you give to God as father, how he gives back to you. Never without. Your see only voice, your future has to obey. God's commanded. You will your way into success. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Can you see tonight? Father, thank you for gifts to give, hearts to give from. Give back to every giver the same way they give it to you. You told Moses to only take offerings from people who were willing to give it. I pray tonight no one is reluctant to give. If so, cause them to keep it. That you might be glorified in all things we do collectively together tonight. Now, Father, open the windows of heaven. Cause that to be blessings that are unstoppable. Hey, I thank you. We're entering to the second quarter, God. This is Passion Week. It speaks of the suffering you made for us. Jesus became poor that we might become rich. You made him to be wisdom for us. Grant unto us all sufficiency of wisdom and understanding that we might be successful in every assignment. This is our prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name. If you're in agreement, shout amen. All right, come on, obey the ushers tonight. If you're using the envelope system, you can come place it in the basket. If you're using a debit card or credit card, you can swipe it to the right or to the left. Come quickly and we're going to let you go. Don't forget, Friday morning we'll be here at 11 o'clock. For those that can come early, meet me at 10 o'clock. I'll be praying with the church for one hour from 10 to 11. And then we'll go into the roundtable discussions of the seven sayings, last sayings of Jesus. You'll answer three questions at your table. Then we'll have one presenter who will share with you the points that I've laid out I want to be brought forth. We'll do that in about 90 minutes, and then we'll have an incredible meal prepared for all. We're going to have boiled crawfish, catfish, jambalaya, potato salad, a salad bar, a juicing station. All righty. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty nice. All right. And, um, and um, try to eat something before you come so you don't come here and eat us out. Okay. It's not buffet style. You spend a few thousand dollars, but, uh, <laughs> All right, I love you. Thank you so much, church, for coming. Stand to your feet. Got to let you go. Don't forget to register if you haven't already. We need a head count, and uh, it's free, okay? Don't forget Friday night. Come on, you're going to have maps in the back. Thursday, we're walking tomorrow. Those that want to be with us as we walk the streets of Banks, about a nine-block area, we're going to be praying in that city. Uh, these will be available to you. And then Good Friday evening, we'll be there in that area about two hours Last week was incredible. People were baptized. They were saved. We're expecting even greater miracles on this Good Friday uh, on this weekend. So if you got a testimony, you want to share it, let Brother A.V. hear it. Listen, nothing like when you're doing community evangelism work than to be able to have a testimony when you proclaim the truth. The streets ain't a place for lecture and a homily. You got to get up and have a testimony. Then you present the gospel of Jesus. Are you with me? You don't really need a script when you're on the street. You let the Spirit lead you. When Jesus sent his disciples to the street, he told them, don't take a script. I'll tell you what to say when you get there. That's a whole nother lesson. Look at somebody to the right or to the left and tell them, neighbor, I love you. There ain't a thing you can do about it. God bless you. See some of you tomorrow night and others Friday. Friends, thanks for joining us on today. I pray that the broadcast, our service, the worship experience, was a blessing to your life. If it was, let us hear from you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have a prayer request or if anything in the service today resonated with you, let us hear from you. Uh, leave a comment or you can go to our website, www.ucfministries.org and we can hear from you there. You can leave a prayer request, find out more about our ministry and connect with us there as well. God bless you.